just an H. H's was the lifeblood of the mob back in the... <clears throat> my, my name is uh, Mark Valancourt, and I thought I'd give you a little history on this tractor. It's here today because at the Billings Farm Tractor Show because this tractor came from the Billings Farm Museum. Um, it was purchased by uh, the, direct, the first director of the museum, uh, Scott Hastings, in the early 1980s. From my understanding, this was at a farm, local farm, that the trees were growing up through it. And uh, the uh, Hartford High School Tech Center uh, uh, got their hands on it and tried to restore it for the museum. And it sat at the museum here for more than 40 years. It, uh, it had a seized engine in it when I purchased it. Well, I was told it was a seized engine. I got this from, uh, from the Mr. Richard Wood, who bought, purchased this at the auction that they had here at the museum. They auctioned off a few pieces years ago. And it sat at his place for quite a while, and I happened to be talking to him at a tractor show and was able to get my hands on this and buy it from him. Uh, so I bought it from him and uh, had to replace a few pieces on it. The transmission and rear end were completely seized from the oil. It turned to tar by sitting in the museum for all those years. So after weeks of putty knives and little chisels and was able to clean all the gears inside the transmission, it uses 600 weight motor oil, which is very unusual and very hard to get, but I did was able to find some. Uh, and now the tractor is in running condition and Kind of hard to start, it's a bear, uh, which they were notorious for that. Very notorious for killing a lot of farmers because on hills sometimes the thing would go up and over the end and, and killed quite a few farmers years ago. Uh, made by Fordson, and uh, it's the name, Henry Ford's son, who built these tractors. And uh, some were sold during the war, uh, Second World War, First World War to uh, England as a workhorse to provide the troops with the materials on the, on the sites. Um, behind this is a 1925, or by the way, the tractor is a 1928. Uh, behind this is a 1925 horse-drawn sprayer, traction sprayer. <clears throat> One wheel would turn a paddle that's inside that barrel, and the other wheel uh, would turn a three-piston Myers pump to build up pressure in a tank, and then that pressure released the uh, liquids, either fertilizer or pesticides, onto the farm plants. And this was that was pulled by a team of horses, normally two. And that's a very rare piece. Uh, you hardly find these anymore. Most of the barrels are completely rotted away. I found this in the woods behind a farm with trees going, again, <laughs> trees going through it. And that's the original barrel that's on that from 1925. I had to replace two barrel pieces of wood on the top and two of the barrel band that go around the barrel. I had to replace two of those. And then I went and restored the rest of it and uh, that's what you see today. So it's quite a, quite a rare piece. You don't see many of them at the shows anymore. And uh, I hope you've, uh, enjoyed this and Billings Farm was very happy to see me here because when they found out I had this tractor and I was thinking about bringing it, uh, they went to their archives and they gave me some pictures of the tractor and some of the manuals that came with the tractor. So that was pretty nice of Billings Farm to do that for me. So thank you very much.
Hi. We are from Pittsburgh, Vermont, and we brought our two Massey Harrises. This one is a 22, and this is a Pacer. They are primarily small farm tractors, and uh, they were both made in the 50s. This one we purchased in Connecticut, actually from um, the second owner. We think that it may have been used on a tobacco farm down there. This one we purchased in New Hampshire. Unfortunately, we don't have any information on that tractor. Um, they both have Continental motors, which are very, very reliable. So, but anyway, we love our tractors and we're glad to be here. Uh, my name is Gil Davis. Uh, I bought this tractor from uh, the Dupree Farm in Pinky, Vermont. Uh, it had been outdoors for eight years, and uh, it was in pretty rough shape, and it was a good winter project. And the manure spreader behind it is, uh, came from the West Clay Farm in East Bedford, and it was in the barn for 18 years. And uh, it was in 100% shape, which was really worth the money that I paid for it all. And I've always wanted to do uh, a and a manure spreader, and uh, I got my wish to do it last year. Otis. Lauren Long is the person that wrote Otis. What? I'm not upside down. I'm upside down. There was once a friendly little tractor. His name was Otis. And every day, Otis and his farmer worked together taking care of the farm they called home. Otis liked to work. But after working hard all day, Otis was ready to unwind and play. He would hide the roll, oh, sorry, he would ride the rolling hills and skirt mud pond down by the corn. He would leapfrog bales of hay and explode through the haystacks. On occasion, he would chase a rabbit and play ring around the rosy with the ducks to the sound of his steady pot, puff, puff. 
puttering chuff. And sometimes at the end of the day, he would just sit under the apple tree and watch the farm below. Every night, tired but happy, Otis would putt puff into the little stall in the barn that was all his. One night when Otis was fast asleep, the farmer brought a beautiful baby calf into the barn. The calf bawled and bawled for her mother, but when the sleepy sound of a soft putt, puff, puttered, chuff, came from the next stall, the scared little calf stopped bawling and drifted off to sleep. From that day on, the calf started following the little tractor wherever he went. Put, puff, puttedly chuff. <laughs> she followed him over the rolling hills and down by mud pond. She was right behind him, leapfrogging bales of hay. And the calf made their games of ring around the rosy all the better. And I'm going to tell you something about this picture after the story, okay? It looks like a B, and it's actually a nine. Okay. That's an eight. That's a... All right. Sometimes at the end of the day, the two of them would just sit together under the apple tree and watch the farm below. Otis loved his little calf, and the little calf loved Otis. Then one day, the farmer surprised everyone with a brand new yellow tractor. Time to move out, Otis, the farmer said. He took Otis out of the little stall in the barn that was all his and parked him back behind the barn. Then he backed the big yellow tractor into the stall next to the little calf. But the little calf didn't like the big yellow tractor. He had a deep rumbling snore that shook the stall when he slept. There was no one to purr, there was no one to purr the little calf gently to sleep. No one to spend her days with, sorry. And Otis, Otis could not even see his farm as the weeds began to cover his tires. His friend often sat with him, but she could not get him to play like the old days. It was early summer when the farmer discovered a poster. Who has the prettiest calf in the land? Judges will decide at the county fair and award a fancy blue ribbon to the winner. The farmer knew the answer. He would show the little calf but on the morning of the fair, the little calf was nowhere to be found. <laughs> she had wandered down to Mud Pond by the cornfield to cool off. When she waded into the muddy water, her feet sank. With every step, she sank deeper and deeper and deeper. The little calf was stuck in Mud Pond. Get the hands, the farmer shouted when he saw her. All the farmhands came running with their ropes, but the more they tugged, the more stuck the calf got. Get the big yellow tractor, the farm, farmer shouted. He can save her. But the big tractor just scared the little calf. She sank in deeper and deeper. Nearby farmers began to gather. Oh, she really is really deep. Then call Fire Chief Douglas and the fire truck, the farmer shouted. They can save our little calf. But the sight of the big red fire truck 
startled the little calf in even deeper. The farmer was fit to be tied. If the farmhands and the big tractor and even Fire Chief Douglas and his fire truck couldn't save the little calf, who could? Suddenly, the little calf's ears perked up. Over the hum of the growing cra crowd, there came a faint sound in the distance, a soft, rhythmic purr, put, puff, puttedly chuff. The crowd turned and looked. The sound became louder, put, puff, puttedly, putted, putted de chuff. And all at once, Otis puffed from around the barn. He turned and headed straight toward mud ponds. Otis put, puffed down the rolling hill and pulled right up next to the muddy water's edge. The calf heard her friends puttering, purr, <laughs> and bawled. It was something like a hello. Then, to the sound of his gentle chuff and the am amazement of all, the people in the crowd, Otis slowly began to circle the pond. He circled and he circled, and the little calf turned and turned, never taking her eyes off her friend. With each ring Otis made around Mud Pond, the muddy grip loosened until the calf was able to stumble out of the pond on her own. The two friends had found each other again. Otis led the calf right down the dusty road toward the village, and everyone threw flowers as they went, following them into town. It looked like a happy parade. No one needed a fancy blue ribbon to tell them that the calf was a special calf. Otis was a special tractor, and the two of them were special friends. From that day on, the farmer discovered from that day on, the farmer discovered that with Otis's puttering purr Beside the chicken coop, his chickens laid more eggs. At milking time, with Otis's gentle chuff nearby, his cows produced more milk. On occasion, Otis even got to join the farmer and the big yellow tractor out in the fields. But often at the end of the day, Otis would just sit with his friend under the apple tree and watch the farm below. Thank you for your patience while I read that story upside down. There is something that I wanted to talk to you about. Have you been around the farm today? Okay. Let me just turn this so I can find that page again. Have any of you gone to the quilt exhibit? All right, there's a quilter that made a quilt with several patterns that she calls crop circles on her quilt. And I'm going to tell the quilt exhibit lady that you might be coming through if you find the particular quilt that has these patterns in it, she'll give you an award, all right? So I think there's four people here now, but I think there were more than four, right? All right. Thank you very much for being Thank here. You. Have fun today. Okay, ready? Where do you want to put it? I think I need to put this one. Well, that's a lot. So you can peel them apart. <laughs> Come on.
<laughs> that, one's, that one's heavy because you have two. There you go. Try it again. that small door that's open and you know where the water fountains are downstairs because I don't think yeah. Is it your turn now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay Alan you ready? Okay for now Alan's turn to drive the tractor okay? Okay. Go see granddad. Big tractor? You driving it? Why don't you want to come around on this side? Hi. 